welcome to SFGAM. I'm excited to bring you my next guest, Judge John Karash. Hello, John. Hey, good afternoon, Bo. Welcome. Thank you. So, uh, first question, what are the misconceptions of most people about being a judge? I think the biggest misconception about people being a judge is that, in some sense, uh, we're you know, sort of high and mighty and powerful and um, perfect to a certain extent and people hold us up to a very high standards and without realizing that we're human beings like everybody else. We make mistakes, we can have good days, we can have bad days and um, that's probably the biggest misconception. So uh, most people actually never have a chance to meet with a judge and most, most, most people get to know you through TV or movies. Right. Uh, how realistic? Uh, the movies, uh, the TV shows? Um, not realistic at all because in the TV show you have to get the trial down to maybe an hour or two hours if it's a movie and uh, the shortest trial in real life probably takes about two or three days and so real trials go much much slower than TV trials and that's kind of the biggest misconception. A murder trial will usually take at least six to eight weeks and usually a lot longer than that. I can't imagine. So let's, let's go back to the basic so how do you become a judge? Well, in California, you have to be a lawyer for 10 years uh, at a minimum, although most people are longer. And judges are elected to a six-year term, but if a judge retires uh, in the middle of the six-year term or before the six-year term is up, then the governor uh, makes the appointment. And it starts by filling out an extraordinarily comprehensive application. You send it up to Sacramento, and then the governor's office decides if they want to send it to the next level, which is to get evaluated by uh, the state bar, which is, which is a 90-day process. They evaluate you, they interview you, and then they vote as to whether you're qualified or not. And if you're qualified, they send you a, up your name back to Sacramento where you interview, if you're lucky, with the governor's judicial appointment secretary who's the one in charge of making the appointments. And after that, you just wait for the phone call and pray and hope that it comes. Uh, and it can be a long wait or it can be a short wait. With me, I um, had my interview with uh, the evaluators uh, in 2000 in I think September, then I met with the governor just a few weeks later, uh, not governor's office, the appointment secretary, and then I got word about three months later I got the phone call. So, so what went through your mind when you received that phone call? Um, it was really exciting. I'd actually been told that it was probably coming because my boss at the time was on a local committee that advised the governor uh, in the Bay Area who should become a judge. So. I got word through that, through my boss, uh, my immediate supervisor who heard it from him, that it was likely coming. So I was kind of expecting it, but you never know for sure until it comes. And it was definitely one of the most exciting moments of my life. But then he said uh, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be announced, the appointment, until the following week. And I had to not tell anybody except my mom. And so I had to keep it inside for an entire week, which was extraordinarily difficult. <laughs> So. so now I, I understand that you, know, you cannot go to school to become a judge. So in your case, when you get on the bench the first day, how do you do that? Um, it was a little nervous, although I was assigned to basic misdemeanor criminal stuff and I did that for so many years as a prosecutor because I was a civil lawyer for, in a big firm for about two and a half years and I was a um, district attorney, a prosecutor for 12 and a half and so I was doing stuff that was actually very familiar. You do get sent to a one-week judicial orientation school within the first um, few months of being a judge where they talk about half of it deals with judicial ethics, the other half talks about how to basically try a case and then in the summer you have to go to a judicial college for two weeks which is usually held in Berkeley and you're in class all day long but it's very very worthwhile and you learn a lot of stuff so you do get education and we also are uh, pretty much not quite required, but base, almost required uh, to the point where we pretty much have to do continuing education um, you know, on a three-year cycle. Wow, that is a quite an interesting journey. It was a long time. From the time that uh, Gray Davis got elected, from the, the very next day I was um, um, on the phone to uh, people, elected officials in my county because part of it is um, merit. The other half is politics because while your name is in the system, you need to have 
people that the governor knows, uh, elected officials, judges, lawyers, police officers, union members to write letters, make phone calls to the governor's office for you. If you don't have that, it's very hard to move your application forward. So you can be really qualified, but if you don't have uh, people that the governor knows that are pushing you, it's a lot harder, if not impossible. Now, my understanding is uh, being a judge pretty much a lifetime uh, career. Yeah, it is um, for the most part. We're, every judge every six years has to face re-election, but 99% um, of the judges run unopposed um, every six years. So I just was unopposed last year, so I'm now starting another six-year term this year, a brand new one. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, so what are the challenges of being a judge, um, professionally as well as personally? I, I think the challenge is, uh, is you're never going to make everybody happy uh, because you have to make decisions and every decision you make is going to favor one side and not favor the other. And so what you try to do is uh, explain your reasoning as best you can and try to treat the side you're ruling against with as much respect as possible. So that's uh, a challenge. As far as personal life, by far the biggest challenge is a judge, if you're not careful, can be very isolating. Um, unlike the district attorney's office where you're sort of all working together as a team and there's lots of you uh, together, as a judge you have a staff of three people, you have a court reporter who takes down what's said, you have a clerk and you have a, a bailiff who's a police officer that keeps security. And um, so you have them, but um, if you're not careful, you can just be back in your chambers or office um, when court's not in session all alone. And so what I try to do is organize uh, lunches with the other judges or sometimes with lawyers um, to get together to socialize because otherwise it would be very isolating. And that's why my friends are so important and why I always every weekend do something with my friends, usually go out to dinner, um, go to football games, go to concerts, go to baseball games, do things that are fun um, and sort of take me out of the system and do things completely different. Uh, I actually have very few, actually um, almost all my closest friends have no connection at all with the legal system. Is that uh, by design or it just happened? It just happened. I think it sort of just happened that way. Uh -huh. But um, thinking of my five closest friends, there's only one of them that's a lawyer. And he's only came late to being an attorney. So maybe it's good for you to get away from the legal system, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Focus on something else. Absolutely. So yeah. What do you do for fun? Do you um, do clubbing? Like no, I don't. I I don't. I've never been into clubbing. It's not. It's not really for me. But um, I love to go to dinner with my friends in San Francisco. Um, just Wonderful about every weekend. Right. Wonderful restaurants. In a, usually groups of about anywhere from five, ten people. I love to do that. Um, I love to go to concerts um, to the point where in uh, last March I flew back to Virginia to see the reunion concerts of uh, Fish, my favorite rock and roll band, and I'm going to go see them in New York in a couple weeks, play three shows. I also every summer go to a folk music fantasy camp where I get to play with a famous folk singing group called the Kingston Trio, which um, um, I very much enjoy and uh, go to Cal Berkeley football games, Giants baseball games, and uh, do things with my family um, and just try to, um, you know, I read, um, surf the internet. I have a very, very friendly and very, very needy cat that needs a lot of attention, so I enjoy being with him and also looking for uh, Mr. Wright. Oh, well, I was speaking of that topic. <laughs> I, I would imagine people might be intimidated when they find out that you are a judge. The reactions are different. Um, I did have one person who, when I told them what I did, who said that's really intimidating and the date just sort of went downhill from there. Um, I don't tell people what I do uh, unless, until I get to know them uh, because I don't want somebody who wants to date me just because I'm a judge. I also don't want somebody to get scared off because I'm a judge and, you know, uh, and want them to realize I'm a human being like everybody else. And I'm also um, in social situations, unlike the courtroom or unlike public speaking, I'm actually quite shy. Right. So it's very hard for me on a first date to just let my natural self show.